Hey, Tim, how are you doing? What's up, Alice? How are you? I am enjoying weather roulette. Today is roulette. in my favor. Nice. Well, minutes, it will probably just be a roll of dust and pre-tornado and rain or who the heck knows. <laughs> well, you're out in the Midwest over there. Nah, Connecticut, it's just raining today. Just a rainy day. Thank it's you. like in New England, never knows what it wants to do. Day and night, it's like one day it feels like February 2nd. Yesterday feels like June 2nd, but it's really May. So whatever. That's all good. So th we haven't done this in a long time. It's been like probably the last time we chatted live was like January or something. I th it's, it was a it was a long time ago. Yeah. We should do it more often. I'm gonna grab so, the link here. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying. So, I'm, what, I'm have having, you been, what have you been working on this school year then since January? Like, gosh. Well, it's like I'm so I'm so excited to be back in the classroom. It's so much fun. I missed it. My heart. I mean, I was out of it for three and a half years. Back in it. And it was a shock to the system for the first like few weeks or so. It was like, you know, it was awesome. But and then uh, I'll be honest, I, I really underestimated the difficulty and hardship it was. I, I really did. And, um, you know, being out there, being outside the classroom three and a half years, now being back in, it's fun. I mean, I'm teaching uh, at two middle schools and two high schools. Um, a total. So I can't even imagine. It's a total of 10 different classes, four different preps at four different schools in a matter of two days. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's fun. You know, um, a lot of credit recovery for seventh grade, eighth grade. I'm in one school every day and it's me. It's yeah. <laughs> well, it's crazy. But I mean, honestly, in doing my job, I could not I could not live without Desmos. I could not live without GeoGebra. Um, I cannot teach without Desmos or GeoGebra or graspable math even which I'm happy we could talk about more. And another one that's taken me forever to get into, and I wish it didn't take so long, was uh, Mathagon. Mathagon is awesome. Um, I'm playing a lot more with that. And I saw you were too. Mathagon.org, right? Website. I included yeah. in my newsletter yesterday. Yep. I'm going to share my screen. Mathagon.org rocks. I love it. Okay, here we go. Yep. Go for it. All right, so I'm at mathagon.org, mm -hmm. and I go, tell me what your favorite parts of it are. I just love the polypad. Go right to the polypad at the top there. Right here at the top. Yep. Click on polypad. Yeah, and again, I'm not a, I'm not I'm no expert by any means. There's people that use it far more than I do, but you just, I just had students go and start exploring and, and playing. I mean, talk about geometry teachers tessellations right here. You know, um, you could explore tessellations, do a lot of different things, doodle put some uh, polygons on there. And even the one, I think there's that one that's concave. You see that one that's like kind of a oh, W. Yeah. yeah, you drag one of those out there and you could turn it and those sorts of things. But it's it's really uh, it's really sleek, really elegant in my opinion. And um, it's awesome, you know. But one thing that, was, that I thought was really cool is if you scroll down a little bit, all right, go all the way down on the left side. Yeah, let's go on the left side. Let's go to the, um, let's go get the scale. Where's the scale? um the balance or whatever it was tools and utensils table measure. that just that just came like today i think or i could have oh used yeah that this year Absolutely. Remember when I was begging you to make me a geogebra protractor it's there yeah but this one this I one's know, great because you made it for me i mean there's other ones but no. the ones that i had i just needed something more basic or not even more no there's something specific i wanted you made it for mm -hmm. me well, let's let's look at the um. Where's where's the scale? Let's go to um balance there. Where was it? I forgot where it was under tools and utensils. Nope. Go to algebra there. Maybe it's under algebra. Oh yeah, balance scales under that. How there do it I is. Share this? Just yeah, just drag it in. Um. Mm, just get just delete everything. That's fine. Um, we'll go ahead and yeah. Right, plan. Just ooh, I can just download it. Um. Yeah. How do I clear the whole thing? Uh, I just refresh. I just refresh the page. Okay, easy way out. <laughs> yeah. Or new poly pad. But let's drag a scale yeah. out there, right? But talk about equivalence. Now let's go to the, yep. Now let's actually go to the fractions there. Let's undo three times. Watch this. You just mess it around there. But go to um, the fractions right there. All right. And let's pull out. Well, not those. Let's do the circle ones. Yeah, you can do that. Fraction circles, whatever, but he could put on the scale there. But we need to get we need to get rid of our hearts and our stars and stuff like that. But you can, in terms of uh, you know exploring, you know um, 
comparing for, comparing ratios just by you know simple you know conceptual. Obviously, a half is bigger than a third. You know, we can start you know saying, well, gosh, how many ninths, for example, would outweigh one half? You know what I mean? So at least there, obviously, that weighs more. But students can start exploring conceptually here, just just messing around and playing around, just by you see what I'm saying? It's really cool. So, and then you could ask students, well, if I have halves over here, say you put three one halves on one side, how many, you know, uh, how many sixths make three halves over here? You know what I mean? So they can start exploring and playing and, uh, and do a lot, doing a lot of cool things. Um, I haven't used this as much as I want to, but um, the possibilities here are absolutely endless. You know? Yeah, it's fine. Um, obviously, you can, you can compare just numbers, 100, you know? And whatnot, but um, you can do a lot of cool things there. It's pretty cool. It works. Yeah. Number of bars. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other day, I think I was I made an open middle question again, just for uh, conceptualization. Okay. I can't find it at the moment, but um, and I, if you follow Mathagon on Twitter, they um, they've been doing some pretty cool things, um, doing a lot of amazing things. I love I love following their Twitter feed. So algebra tiles, Ken Kent. The uh, rec neck, whatever. Abacus. Yep. And the exploding dots, uh, the James Stanton. Um, well, the exploding doc, dots week and different number bases and everything like that. But this is a, a very powerful tool. Um, you can create probability simulations very easily here. All right. Again, I have a lot of playing to do with this this summer. So I am not the expert here. But I know people who, uh, yeah, isn't that awesome? A lot better at it than I randomize. Yep. Look at that. There you go. And so I know Mathagon makes it makes a, a way where you can assign to Google Classroom and um, or you can have classes right on here where kids where students join. So um, but the possibilities here are endless. So uh, I encourage teachers if you have time this summer. I mean, we're all busy. We're, like, we're all burnt out. It's the end of the year. We're done. You know, but that rainy or day or two in the summer. Play with Mathagon. It's uh, it's an amazing cool tool. Absolutely, Jacqueline. I agree 100%. Mathagon rocks. So, Thanks. yeah. Oh, let's see. I was sharing my tab. All right. Not sure. It's fine. Yeah, but I definitely that's that's one thing I might to do list this summer is to play a lot more. I want to create more. I want to create a lot more in here because there is this is a rich, uh, creative. Uh, platform creative environment if you will mm -hmm. um that's called the polypad there and they have some pre-made activities too and they also have ways i uh, found out for teachers to create their own lessons uh uh on uh, in mathagon as well too you know so that's on my to-do list there but what really has been um what i'd really love to show you uh what i've been using a lot of in my mm -hmm. credit recovery for algebra one especially is graspable math um so we can go there if you want or i can screen share Monet. yeah I use this with my students as well. Yep. But do you, that's the actual canvas itself. But have you ever gone to activities at graspelmath.com? Where do right. I find activities? Right here. Right where? Graspel materials? Uh, activities.graspelmath.com. I'm typing it in now. That's it right there. It's activities.graspelmath.com. Okay. Yeah. So you log in, you pretty much, you could log in with your login as a teacher. Okay. Um, so you're a teacher there. Okay. Now you can go to activity bank. All right. And now let's actually, uh, you have to sign in first. Sure. All right. Now what graspable math has done, I mean, like, I mean, Geodesman, I mean, like Geodesman, Desmos and graspable math all have the ability where teachers can actually watch student work live and in real time. Right. But the cool thing here with graspable is that you can actually zoom into any student's work up close and see live changes up close versus Geodesman Desmos. When you look at one student's work up close, you get a preview only. Right. Which is still awesome. But with graspable math, you can actually see it live, like, say, as well. And yes, just like, I mean, I mean, granted, you could take an image, probably do that in a Google form. You know what I mean? But let's actually go to, um, let's actually make our own activity here for a second. So let's go to something else here. Or you want, you want me to screen share here? Sure. All right. Let me, let me go there. Let me give me one second. I do here. All right. Let me screen share. Ah, 
I was logged in there. One second, share, share screen. All right, here we go. So in graspable math right here, right? So obviously the uh, teacher logged in. So now I go to activity bank here. All right, so I'll sign in again, sign in. All right, so let's actually go to, I'm gonna go to create an, I'm gonna go to create an activity right here. Okay, in the upper left corner, I like to create my own. So when I create an activity, uh, I'll call it sample activity two. You can even have it, people join it. So uh, this is, what I'm gonna do is uh, create an activity. And after that, I create a session for people to join. See up here where it says make session? That's a session you can invite your students to come join. Um, we'll do that, we could put that in after. But let's see here. So I'm gonna actually add a task. There's several different types of tasks here. All right, there's uh, something we call goal state, line it up, canvas, multimedia, mm -hmm. multiple choice, and hotspot. Obviously, multiple choice is kind of like I could do that in Google Forms, right? So mm -hmm. great, Got a correct answer, whatever. But uh, I like to put a canvas here. Canvas is pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. So add a task. And this is the typical graspable math canvas that you would normally go when you go to graspablemath.com, right? Now, the cool part is here, Alice, you can actually import a camp. If you've made something previously, you can import it right here from um from wherever all i gotta do is put the link to a gm canvas that you've made before mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll put it right in there but what i like to have uh what i like to do here is actually just simply um uh, i act i have students just sketch me a picture mm. of how you're feeling today checking in and i like to tell them to use the draw tool okay now i'm intentional here and i'll show you i'll tell you why So there it is, and hit done. So that's it. But what I have to do here is edit it. And the reason why I do this is because I need to go to the settings area. This is a little hack that a lot of people don't know about, but because uh, of the future tasks I'm gonna do here. But under settings, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna find where it says scrubbing numbers. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see that there. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the scrub place, the decimal place zero. Because when kids change coefficients in different uh, in different things, I want it to be um, I want it to be to nearest whole number. Yeah. So I save, I save the changes and I hit done down here. Now by doing that, that makes every other task that I'm going to put in here um, uh, a format appropriately. It's kind of let, let me actually let's do it. Let's do another uh, called line it up. Okay. So line it up is simply um, really what it is. So I I add the task. Mm -hmm. And I want to make a goal graph here. So I want students to graph the equation, say y equals 3 fourths x plus 2. And I hit done. Okay. So um, so for the instructions here, I uh, like to tell students, I like to tell them to say, hey, uh, scrub. Actually called the scrub. The coefficients okay. you see to get your graph match the one shown cool. that's really cool. now, to me scrubbing beats a slider all right so um right there so i'll simply hit uh, i'll hit i'll add that option there and my students like use the sliders for the desmos graphs today and i'm like you can't yep. but what i asked them to do is they had to pick a cartoon character and like you're not going to be able to add the equation and do the sliders for all the equations you're going to need for this so right have at it, do it once, but then you're going to have to to basically scrub them. Uh, right. So, so this is what it looks like here. If I click on my mouse and actually go up and down, see what I mean? I actually can, uh, I'm clicking on my mouse, I can scrub it right here. And so now, obviously, the y-intercept has to be two, right? So I leave it there. And now it's a matter Now it's a matter of, gosh, what's the slope of that line? You see what I'm saying? So kids, no, I have kids, move, move that out of the way, you know? So you think that there's a point here. But where else is there a nice point that's all oh, right here, right? So, yeah. oh, a rise of three, a run of four, right? So the kids, so the students go back and make this two. Now I'm in preview mode. But if I make this, go down, make that a three, I could scrub that, make it a four. Well, I just had it. There, it'll turn green. Now I'm, I'm in preview mode right now, okay? So let me exit the preview. But now see, I, I can go ahead and copy this uh, right here. And I can I can make another version, edit it. Okay, look at that. And yeah, so I mean, I could just um, start. Let me make another one here. Let's say, I don't know, negative 
they get a two fifths X, I mean, plus and all they need is a few, you know, uh, say minus two, something like that. And I could actually, I could actually, um, I could actually have it have starting values like nine over five X plus uh, five, four, something like that. So I could tell the line where to start and where I want it to, to, to be. I hit done. Now, if I go to preview right here, I could actually take it and uh, see what it looks like in number three in preview mode. Okay, and so now I do it, click it, and you see here now this is what the students will be doing. You see what I mean? So obviously, oh, wow, that slope's got to be negative, right? And so I think I got it right there. There we go, like that. I did that with some of my Algebra 1 credit recovery students today, and, you know, some of them were done. It was just a quick review for like five minutes. Some of them were done in three. Some of them needed to take 10 or 11, but it was a great it was a great uh, source for just meaningful remediation and just working with it this way. But the part I love about it is that students are actively engaged, they're involved. It's not the teacher, blah, 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 flapping his or gums. It's the student who's at work, you know, and they're the center of attention, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, another another type of task here, I won't show them all today, but is um, goal state, okay? So goal state, what you do is you and add a task. With goal state, you have to simply put something here. Let's say uh, 2x minus 3 minus 5x, something like that. And the goal state is going to be what? I mean, obviously, I have to tell it what it needs to be. So it's going to be negative 3x, right? Um, minus 6, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, no, negative 3x, sorry. Like that. So that's the goal state right there. And I'm going to hide the goal state on the students. And I'm going to allow for commuted answers because if a student has negative 6 minus 3x, you still want to turn green, right? And so I'll just tell the students here, hey, simplify. Okay. Following expression. And then, whoop. Can you do this again with an elementary example? Oh, sure. Like order of ops? Yeah. So let's add a goal state here. And let's say um, 3 plus 4. Four minus two times uh, three, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. and so now, what's the what's the goal state here? Uh, seven minus oh, six oh, is one. Start using the dot. My fifth grader is always very confused when I put the dot for multiply. Mm hmm. You can and you could change it to uh, parentheses, I think, too. But um, I just say, hey, evaluate. Because if you try to do something that violates the order of operations, it'll shake its head. It doesn't like you, right. you know. So, oh, it's awesome. So, and the what the best way I could describe graspable math is that it is an is an app that helps students develop procedural fluency through a very conceptual lens. It's just like you know, sure they could use photo math, take a picture of it, it solves the equation. Teachers, you know, they're pulling their hair out over that. But it's like you know what? It's like it's almost like well, gosh, we we talked about changing the questions we asked, but here, you know, students actually have to know what to do in order to do it, you know, which is really cool. So if I hit done, all right, so there's three, dif two different types of tasks right there. Now I can make a session uh -huh. and I'll make it a public session. I'll create it. What's assessment it mode? Say it again. What's assessment mode? Uh, it's like uh, test mode. I think it hides, um, I think it, I think, I'm not sure. I think it hides the fact that they get it right or wrong. But um, well, let me just hit, uh, let me just copy the link there. And have people join if they want. Whoops. Oh, cool. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. So come join. We'll see how it is there, you know. And by the way, you can link it. You can actually uh, link it to Google Classroom as well, too, uh, right here. And I'll show you. That's very easy. That's, that's done in a minute or less. I took all my 10 Google Classroom classes, and I just basically synced them to it. It's done. So, yeah, it's really, really cool. So let me share my uh, screen. Let's see. I mean, I know it's uh, <laughs> there waiting for students to join. Okay. No one's in yet, and that's okay. I mean, hey, we're all, it's after school. School's still in session in certain parts of the U.S., but, you know, yeah. at least we, um, you know, we have, we have something that through which we can, we can work here. And and see, you know, uh, someone's in. We could see. Um, they could sketch on the canvas. I can actually show student work. So if this, I can actually write on the student screen. The student won't see it, but um, 
anything that uh, anything that the student does. I mean, Al Sheeran too. But watch this. Anything you do right here, go ahead and draw on the screen. See, this is what I'm saying. You can look at you can look at it up close, and you can see updates up close. It might take five seconds to update, but it does, which is pretty cool. You know. Okay. Hello to you too. So now, um, if we if we move on to task two. All right, we can go to task two there. And I notice I can actually look right here. One, two, three. I can look at one task at a time. Or I can or I have a student overview page right here. For student overview, I can actually uh, I can actually see where students are, what task they're on. Okay. Show aggregate information. You know, data. So for line it up, right? I'm showing uh, the summary of the work here for students, but I can click on you, the student, right there. I can see Alice's work here. And so why don't you go hop to line it up there, Alice, and see if you can line that graph up there. Now, it's going to... The answer a couple minutes ago. Say what? Yeah, yeah, right. But obviously, no, again, it's, I mean, the, the, the changes you see, you know, you'll see changes every couple of seconds. Wow, that's 85 there. But you'll see... Uh, oh, by the way, a little hack. If you click on a number, you could change it just by typing it in. Yeah, I did. Yep. Oh, but this is pretty cool. We could do this with quadratics. We could do this with other types of functions as well. But here for line linear, very basic, but you could totally do that. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty neat. So every day, you know, for the for for many days, my uh, math eight, and my algebra one students, I'll just take the first five minutes, maybe the first four minutes, give them two or three of these. Here's your warm up. Boom, let's go. And again, so it's that constant. Oh, remember what I have to, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, cool. yeah, but we see we have more people. We have more people in here now, and so uh, people are just going up. And once once the student graphs align correctly, you'll see uh, in the overview page. You'll see a green. Oh, there's a right. little change there, super. Yep. So if you if you do one of those correctly, you'll see it uh, turn green. Just when you see your uh, thing turn green, it'll turn green as well. So it's pretty neat. But I've been using a lot of this, a lot of Desmos, a lot of GeoGebra. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I've been doing more of the Desmos. I'm doing the. I have a Desmos workshop that I'm running right now. It's just an intro to what mm -hmm. is Desmos if you haven't heard of it before. And um, then I'm I'm working on getting better at doing computation layer. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can ask you a question. What I'm trying to do is I, I, mean, I can answer I it. I can do <laughs> a piece of hidden colon, mm -hmm. but I want it to be after they submit, not if they haven't submitted? Um, I, I would actually probably use hidden is the you'd probably is defined, uh, like right here. I think this might be the answer to your question. Um, I might be wrong, but if you want to hide something and that that's like a, that's a very like advanced kind of a question, but <laughs> Yeah, and you were the one that was telling me to slow it down like months ago. Give me a break. Here you are, hitting, you know, hit press on the gas. Let me let me just see something here. I think I understand what you're saying. So, like right here, I'll show you an example of something I'm working on here. Um, yeah. Let me see. I have to I'm logged in custom. So uh, I'm gonna go to these percent modeling templates here. Where is it? Not the copy of. Um, but yeah, we'll just go to the copy of here. Right. Yes. All right. So sure. I'll edit. All right. So here's here's what we could do. So if I look at this in preview mode, your screen, Tim. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Again, I'm still learning computation layer as well too. Mm -hmm. um, it's my project, but the way this activity works is like like I'm trying to you work on randomizing random numbers here. Mm -hmm. So what's twenty seven percent of twenty? And then if I exit out of it and it preview again. It's asking me a different question, 65% of 57. So every so I want every student to have a different question, but I want them to answer this type of question. Okay, right. You know, so obviously I want students to enter something here. So basically they would have to enter the percentage, 65. Uh, and the whole amount here is 57. I want I want to see if they could set it up. But you notice here, notice here that this this um this part disappeared. See the amount of this part that you can make stuff disappear when something's filled in. Like this is 57. See how it disappeared? 
Okay. I don't know if I don't know if that answers your question, but the way that I did that here, um, right here, I actually have I have several notes and like I have a note right here. I have a note followed by an input box, another note followed by another input box. Yeah. Another note. Now they all show up at the same time, but then when two of the boxes are filled, one of them disappears. Mm -hmm. So the way that I the way that I program this is um, right here, I think, in computation layer. Nope. Hang on. It's for N1. If I, if I go to that edit computation layer script right there, what I did is I, I, I said this right here. Um, like right here. It's hidden when the I2 and I3 are defined, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what can make stuff vanish or reappear if you want it to. Um, but in terms of a button, what you'd have to do is go to the computation layer documentation here, that link right there. And they totally reorganized this page and made it a million times better. But anything, any decimal. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, I have this, I, this is like, I'm on this page at least once a day. But anything that I want to see here, I, hear that. Um, I look right, here. The six, the... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Let's say click on my activity. Let me put it in the private chat because, of course, it's not accessible from the other chat. Mm -hmm. So this is what I've been playing with. See what I was able to do. If you go to the private chat on the side, you can get that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I thought you were going to screen share, but let me um, let me see here. Take a look what I got. All right. No, I hope I let me share again. Oh, my fans going here. My computer. All right. This is it right here. Yep. Just let me go. Let me go in here. Let me go in here and copy and edit it. Anytime okay. I want to dissect something, I copy and edit it. Always. Always. So let's see. Let's preview this thing. What is your name? Okay. I went the hard way to copy screens. I was thinking I had to copy and edit to get my own editable copy, but right here from the preview. Yep. There we go. So what are we trying to do here? Draw six two ways. Um. Which one? Yeah. Yes. Draw six two ways. That yes. And then you don't have to do that. All of it did. It didn't it ask you to put your name on the first one. It did, but I skipped it. Okay, you can't skip it. Oh, sorry. All right. Okay. So, yeah. I wanted to say after you put that in, hey, Tim, but I don't want it to show up until you've typed it. Oh, um, there's a way to do that. Uh, it's <laughs> so it's it's got to be. So obviously you want you want to write a note, right, to the student yeah, yeah. once they type it in. So what I would do, again, I don't know the answer to your question off the top of my head, but what I would do. So you can see how I did use it. So what I got, yeah. going, just, just, just go through all of them and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Where um, are we? All right. Okay. So go okay. here. Then, um, on the next frame, draw number six two ways. You can skip that one. I don't anything in there. Okay. Okay. And so now I put in two numbers that add up to six. Okay. Two different numbers that add up to six. Submit. All right. So now what? For the next one. Okay. So there it goes. It says, hello, Tim. Okay. See, two oh. and four, as I saw so a decimal as well. And I could say, gee, two and four are decimals, 2.0 and 4.0. <laughs> no, <I'm just> yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Go to the next one. You see, I have to, I'm working on how to get it to show when it's not submitted. No, when it is submitted. What do you mean? Yes. So I, I need a note to confirm. And I've done well, it, and then I forgot what I did. Uh, I, honestly, I'm still learning too. I'm not quite sure. I know there's probably people watching who'll answer it right now. <laughs> but they go to the next screen, which should, in theory, be easy. Two and four add to six. Yep. See, so they add to six. There you go. Okay. So now, so uh, keep in some directions. So put something. Put a parenthesis. You know. What do you want me to? What do you want me to type in here? Point the add. Yeah. So Just three. Disease. So it should say enter an ordered pair, and I don't have that. Okay. Well, it's not type. It's, it's looking for some. It's looking for something here. If I look at the uh, exclamation yeah. mark here, cannot evaluate the expression. It's looking for an expression here. Um, three x or an mm -hmm. I don't know. Now I don't know what I did. 
Okay. All right, forget it. Well, it's okay, but see, but the thing is... Yeah, I'm trying to show you... All right, go to the next one. But what I, what I was able to figure out... Mm -hmm. See, it says, put the X and Y, now do the X and Y. All right, so one, five. Yeah. Nice. And, you can, and then, okay, look, I did it right there. Yep, you got it. I got it where it shows up afterwards. So, okay, so I just got to go look at my own. So now we could put we could put another input, but we could put another math input. We could put another input right here. Okay, you know what I mean? I just, well, you could put the input, uh, go back up to the one five and put in something different. All right, let's say uh, five, zero, uh, five one. Put yep. something that doesn't work. I mean, it'll still work. It'll still plot. Let's see, negative two, one. Okay, so obviously, well, there we go. Gosh, those don't add up to six, right? But you know, the question is, you could put a note there. There's there there obviously is a way to program it that okay. if you know, what I mean, those don't if you know that doesn't add up to six. Now, see in GeoGebra, I know how to do it. Like I could do it like that, but <laughs> in Desmos, I would have I would I totally have to look up. But one thing that I would actually, uh, there, obviously, there is a boolean. There is a okay. sync called correct colon. Yeah, that that correct makes the this is I was actually asking this in the in the group last night the Desmos group, but the the correct call the correct sync is what causes that check to show up on the teacher dashboard. Yeah, so if you have a mul someone was asking me this yesterday, if mm -hmm. you have a multiple choice question and you've indicated the multiple choice answer is correct and they mark it correct, it shows up as correct with a checkbox on the on the grid, right? Uh, this, yes. So you yep. ask them to explain their answer. Is there any way to get that to do a checkbox on from the multiple choice portion? Uh, well, if you define, well, the thing is, it's like that. The the, the way that Desmos, I think, again, I, I'm not I'm not an expert there, but I be, I believe the way that Desmos does it, it's 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 it does it through numeric. I mean, once you start once you start actually putting words in into a, a text box, you know, that's a whole different ball. Uh, it's a whole different ball game. The way that Desmos works is just like you know. You could do it as a single correct, a single Boolean, or if several of them are, are true. Well, you know what I mean? Got the multiple choice portion, and then they're just supposed to explain their answer. There's no way as a teacher that I can go through on Desmos, right, and get that dot check mark to show for me manually. Pretty sure, right? I honestly don't know. I just know that the, the, the way that I use it is if a student actually I, – I make a point to look at every student's response, you know, mm -hmm. Um, obviously with through the, through the teacher dashboard, I can see, I could totally see who is, you know, I could totally see who's answered it correctly or answered it not, you know what I mean? But obviously, you know, they could look at the person next to, I don't know. I'm like, not that I'm about to get them, but, um, but like I said, this is well, something I'm still working on right now. The student, I'm talking on the teacher dashboard, Yeah. look at their response. I don't have a way to, to toggle it from a dot to a check. I'm, I'm just confirming. Is that right? No, well, there there are screens. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. There are screens that have an input and a and an explain yourself. And if the input's correct, if the math input is correct, the check will appear, whether the student explains or not. Okay, so that's what I couldn't figure out. Yeah, but, but no, that was that was the first thing I said. But the second was when after I read their explanation, so they got the multiple choice correct. It puts it as a dot. There's an explain. I read the explain. I'm okay. That's good. I don't have any way of saying yes. Change that to a check. Well, no, I mean, because the, ch the check on the dashboard is defined only in terms of the math input or inputs, not in terms of uh, if they've written something down. I mean, I could be wrong. person to ask that is to his uh, Jay Chow on Twitter. He is the computation layer guru. Whoa. Um, Yeah. And there's in Desmos, just like in GeoGebra, in Desmos, there's 8 million ways to do 8 million things, you know, and you got to find a way that works best for you. You know, I'm still on the CL learning train too. I mean, CL, it's like I... To me, it's a hobby. When I have tons of grading to do, it's like uh, I both part and like play with CL. You know, it's just I I'm not the only teacher that does that. Fascinating. That is definitely true. I got caught up on some grading yesterday. Yep. I had a classic student says to me, she looks up in Power School. She's like, I, I have a zero for the Unit Seven project. I'm like, did did you do the Unit Seven project? She's like, no, I worked on my history. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm I'm still playing with Desmos. I love. I mean, like I'm I'm fortunate. The the Desmos Middle School curriculum. My 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 supervisor has actually gotten us the 30 day trial. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. It is great. It is amazing. Um, you know, because the, the, they get the students to think. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome. Um, you know. I wish they had it for geometry because that's what I'm teaching next year. We're going to use in the illustrative math next year. Mm -hmm. 
or geometry and some things about it I like and there's some things about it I wish were better. It's a little more authentic. Like why can't we're using digital things. Why can't I stick a picture in there? Like shouldn't I be able to like where does this come sure. from? You know, one of the things that you like to show me is you know, where should you put a Lowe's? Is that what your example is? And so you're Yeah, well, it's like go to Map Custom or go to Home Depot and Lowe's and like locate all the stores in your in your area. And let's analyze, you know, I mean, Home Depot's came first. They were they're old and Lowe's came after. So the Lowe's were built reactively, Home Depot's were built proactively, right? Home Depot, I mean, Lowe's wants to make a dent in Home Depot's business, right? Mm -hmm. So when you analyze where they put, you know, um you know, back in the nineties, it's like, I knew how the Home Depot was. It's like, you know, here's all the commercial real estate. Where would you put a Lowe's? If you only had to put N minus one of them around in the area, have students figure out where to put them. Yeah. You know, you'd be surprised. A lot of them right on a perpendicular bisector. You know, between the, two. The, the illustrative math curriculum initially is, is I, I want to, I want to have something like that where it's got a real map behind it or a real picture. And a lot of it's just a, a dry, straight up triangle. Like where did sure. that triangle come from? Sure. No, I mean, but you know, you go to you go to Google Earth. You could put markings on it, take a screenshot, throw it in. You could throw it in GeoGebra for sure. Yeah. You could you could drag you could drag and you could drag images in Desmos Graphing Calculator too. You know, um, you know, you have to define the center in terms of you know coordinates. Say you could do that. You know, um, I think it's easier at the moment to do it in GeoGebra. But again, every app has their, has its strength. You know, exactly. which I think it's cool. It's, it's easy to get overwhelmed as a teacher. Like, oh, my gosh, there's so many apps. I feel like I'm so far behind. I'm still learning. I don't you know, I don't know everything, but it's like, you know, I just start playing around with it. And the cool part is, is in my job, it's like I could play along with my students. Now, I'm not going to do that on a day that I'm getting formally observed, you know, but at the same time where it's like I was playing with Mathagon, had the students just tell me, tell me three new things you learned about Mathagon today. Yeah. And they come up with something. And it's awesome. Something That's I didn't even know. I like to introduce it Tell yep. me something you figured out about it. I don't want to start off with me showing it to you. Especially in a day when like, you know, uh, uh, you know, summative assessments for a lot of, are getting thrown out the window. We're finding alternate ways to assess. And we have to because of the nature of the uh, nature of the beast right now. So it's a perfect year to do that. Perfect year. It's not about students just getting all the work done and doing all the assignments so I can put checks on my gradebook. No, that's yeah. not what it's about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, and some teachers have a hard time accepting that. You know, they do. And it's understandable. You know, but um, but we're learning. We're all learning, growing together. And I think this pandemic has helped many, like a lot of people realize that there's certain things that can be done. I don't want to say better digitally, but there are certain things that could be done more effectively digitally. Some can be Some better things. done digitally. Some right. things can be better done on papers. I yes. saw someone tweet out earlier uh, the lessons from this year that they're taking forward. That next year, Desmos will be their number one go-to that some activities are better on paper and some things I can transform and do better digitally. I'm like, yes, that's exactly it. There's no reason to be in one camp or the other. Sure. Um, but I mean, there's, there's things you just can't do with it with, without a digital tool. So for example, you know, I introduced circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, the equations of those, you know, it's X minus H squared over A squared plus for an ellipse, minus for um, a hyperbola, y minus k squared over b squared equals one, and those it's minus h and minus k and how it's it's opposite, right? And a lot of times you're going to see on an ACT type question is where's the center, where's the foci, where's the vertex if it's a parabola, these kinds of things. And it, they're literally trying to trick you with that one piece of information on a multiple choice, whether it's positive six or negative six. Well, that's what I think. They're all the trick. Oh. Those, the, the, like, well, the SAT is, is not, and those, those tests are as inauthentic as they come. They are as inauthentic you know? as they come. But then when I, so I had the students, they pick their cartoon character and they're like looking at the different shapes in the picture that they have to get the Mickey Mouse's elbow. I was like, well, that, that looks like a hyperbola. Uh, yeah, where I have the X uh, term first. Well, synthesis, you're creating. Well, where, what, what numbers do I have to put in here? It needs to move a little bit this way. So I have to actually put in a positive value because it goes the opposite direction. Whereas if you use Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K, it's the H that's minus, but the K is plus. But without, with a digital, but, the, but you know, on paper. Better than just doing a bunch of practice problems. Right. 
having kids built. Great concept cool. today. Well, like the Desmos R projects they have, it's beautiful. Yeah, you know, I love seeing what students come up with every year. And it's like to have to give opportunities to kids to create open middle, kids can create and logically reason yeah. along the way. Um, with Desmos R project, oh my gosh, that's a rich thing. I mean, there are teachers out in the US that use that as their final exam. That alone, you know, using all the different types of functions, you see it. And yes, it's like every student, it'll take a few minutes to grade every student with your rubric, whatever that looks like. But you know what? When the student can create, you know, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. Totally. Yeah. And so, all and those, we're doing yeah. today. I was surprised. What's that? I said all my students were doing it. Like they were into it. They were trying to get the equations on there. That's awesome. And I let them know they had to do the entire picture. They're like, what? I'm like, trust yep. me, it's going to feel good yeah. when you get it all on there. But it's, you know, once you do this several times that you really work through finding these patterns of how these work, you're going to get so much more out of this. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And it's just, cool. you know, to, to try and do that uh, without Desmos is ridiculous. Uh, yep. you know, feel like when we're doing graphs and things by hand, it's just losing the force for this trees, this plotting points nonsense, not the spell. It's the interpretation, what it means, mm -hmm. how to put it places, doing it enough times that you can see what the pattern is. That to me is really the beauty of, of using a tool like Desmos. Totally. Totally. And even though I was in one camp for several years, you know, I wish I could, uh, Wish I could. I wish I could go back and I would use a lot more equally. Honestly, it's coming from the heart. Like I said, I have nothing against GeoGebra. I love GeoGebra. I'll always use it. You know, but I love That's Desmos just as much. To know collaborative tools, where you're saying I use Google tools. No, you know, nothing yep. beats Google for collaboration. Um, but uh, you know, it's not the only things that I use. I, I do. I use Desmos. I use GeoGebra. I use Minecraft. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, uh, it was good talking. I know I have to get going, but um, it was a great Thanks, chat. Thank you. But, uh, Do this again yeah. another time. Have a great one. Catch up. Bye.